This video is going to look at the electrochemical series and how you use it to predict redox reactions. First thing we need to do is look at the reactivity series of metals. When zinc is placed in copper sulfate solution, a reaction occurs causing copper metal to form on the zinc. And we've done that in class. So you put a piece of zinc in some copper sulfate and what happens is you get this coating here of copper metal on the outside of the zinc. Okay, this is called a displacement reaction because zinc is removing copper from the solution. And it goes something like this. So here we have the piece of zinc put into the solution. You can see here that the zinc gives up its electrons and moves into solution. It becomes aqueous. So this is the equation of what's happening there. We've got zinc forming zinc, two plus ions, aqueous, plus two electrons. So this is forming electrons or losing electrons. So this has to be the oxidation half equation. Now what's happening is the copper is hooking up with those two electrons there and becoming copper solid. So we've got Cu2 plus ions which are coming out of the copper sulfate plus the two electrons becoming or forming the copper on the outside, the copper solid. And that's a reduction reaction. So zinc solid in copper sulfate a reaction happens. However, if you place a copper strip into zinc sulfate solution, no reaction occurs. The question is why? The reason being is that zinc is more reactive metal than copper. A more reactive metal by definition will displace a less reactive metal iron from a compound. This means that the metal iron will be changed back into the metal and that's exactly what we saw with the copper ions, copper ions change back into copper metal. The more reactive metal the the zinc displaced the ions in the solution. Okay, this is the activity series of metals. And you can see here that this is an increasing oxidation occurs. So, this is the most reactive of the metals down to least reactive metals. We've done the experiment, we put lithium in water, what happened? It reacted vigorously. Why? One of the reasons, it's only got one electron in its outside shell. Potassium as well, another one that reacts quite vigorously. Gold, platinum, silver, this is what your jewellery is made of. These metals don't react very, um, very often at all, or well, very readily. So when you've got a series like this, at the top here, you can see that there's the most reactive metals such as lithium, potassium, barium, calcium. They're the most easily oxidized. They lose electrons very easily. That table there forms the basis of the electrochemical series. Uh, the electrochemical series you'll find back on the back of the laminated uh, periodic tables that I've given you. And this is always given to you. Okay. Some metals oxidize easily. For example, sodium, iron, magnesium. Other metals rarely oxidize, example, um, platinum and gold. This is where the electrochemical series comes into play. It lists half equations in order of their tendency to occur as reduction reactions. So here's an example of an electrochemical series, and this is taken from your textbook. So the strongest oxidant will always be found up the top left-hand side. And in this instance here, it's gold ions. Now these gold ions will undergo reduction to form gold solid. Your strongest reductant is down on the bottom right hand side of the electrochemical series. This will undergo oxidation. So these reactions like to go in the backwards direction. Remember oxidation is loss of electrons. So lithium solid here is losing electrons to form lithium plus ions. For a redox reaction to take place you must always have an oxidant and a reductant. 
Something must be giving up electrons and something must be accepting electrons. And thus you need both species for it to go ahead. So your oxygen is being reduced. So the reaction at the top of the electrochemical series or the high reaction must always be going in a forwards direction because it must be the reduction reaction. Whereas the reaction underneath it must be occurring in a backwards direction. So you need to have a species or an oxidant with a reductant on the right hand side below the oxidant for the reaction to occur. For example here, this is one of the most vigorous reactions that will occur because you've got one of the strongest oxidants, gold ions, that will react with lithium solid. Lithium solid will undergo oxida oxidation to produce one electron plus lithium ions. It'll give that electron to gold ions to form gold solid. You've got an oxidant and a reductant which is below it on the right hand side reacting. They can be closer together, so you've got lead ions here reacting with a reductant below it on the right hand side. This reaction goes in a backwards direction. They can even be one apart from one another as long as the reductant is below and on the right hand side of the oxidant. And remember the bottom reaction, the oxidation reaction must occur in a backwards direction. If however we have a situation such as this where you've got copper solid and lead ions, this reaction cannot occur because the reductant is not underneath the oxidant on the right hand side. So no reaction will take place. So we can use the electrochemical series to predict redox reactions as long as we remember that the strongest oxidant will always react with the strongest reductant. So in this situation, if we have two half cells, one with copper and copper ions, one with zinc and zinc ions, to find out which species are going to react, we have a look. The strongest oxidant is always the higher one on the left hand side and the strongest reductant is always on the right hand side underneath it. So it's these two species here that are going to react. So of course the copper will undergo reduction to form copper solid and the zinc will undergo oxidation to form zinc 2 plus ions plus 2 electrons. So a question will ask you whether two species are going to form a redox reaction with one another. So here we have copper 2 plus ions and zinc solid. I've just cut out a section here of the electrochemical series and you can see the first row is copper ions plus electrons forming copper solid and the bottom row you've got zinc ions plus two electrons forming zinc solid. Remember for a reaction to occur you need something that's on the top left hand side of the electrochemical series reacting something lower to it on the right hand side. So here we have copper 2 plus which is on the upper left hand side can react with something on the lower right hand side and we have zinc. So the reaction can proceed the top one in the forward direction and the bottom reaction backwards. And this is exactly what happens. Copper 2 plus here is reduced to become copper solid and it reacts with the zinc solid to form zinc 2 plus ions. The zinc is oxidized, the copper 2 plus is reduced. Reduction is gain of electrons, oxidation is the loss of electrons. So our reactions are the oxidation half equation is zinc solid goes to zinc 2 plus. That should be aqueous and your reduction half equation here is copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons forms copper solid. So now you just add those two together making sure that your electrons are balanced. 
they are here. There's two electrons being produced and two electrons being used. So we've got zinc solid plus copper ions forms zinc 2 plus aqueous plus copper solid. Let's look at another example. Silver ions and copper solid. Again, I've cut out that part of the electrochemical series. Remember the top equation, once we've found the species, so there is silver ions, there is copper solid. The top equation needs to go in the forward direction. We have silver ions, so it can go in that direction to form silver solid. The bottom has to go in a backwards direction. So we've got copper solid, so that's okay. It can go in the opposite direction to form copper 2 plus plus two electrons. So silver is reduced, it's gaining electrons to form silver solid, it's moving in a forwards direction because it's the top reaction on the electrochemical series and it needs to react with something lower on the right hand side which in this case is copper solid. So copper solid is oxidized and becomes copper 2 plus plus two electrons. The overall reaction, again, you need to balance out those electrons, which is why silver gets a 2, and you just add those together. Okay, third example here, aluminium 3 plus ions and nickel solid. Here I've cut out the electrochemical series again, and we need to find our species. So Al3+, plus, there it is here, and nickel solid is here. Remember the top reaction has to go in a forwards direction. We don't have any nickel 2 plus ions. We've only got nickel solid and over here the bottom reaction has to go in a backwards direction. We don't have any aluminium solid. This reaction cannot go ahead. There is no reaction. This is an example question. In the galvanic cell below, identify the anode and the cathode and write the full equation for the reaction. So here we've got copper solid in a copper iron solution and we've got silver solid in a silver iron solution. So we need to establish which is the oxidation half reaction and which is the reduction half reaction. Okay, the first thing we need to do is look at our electrochemical series. And I've again just cut out the important part here. Remember, something on the top left-hand side needs to react with something on the bottom right-hand side. So we have silver ions and we have copper solid. So that reaction, top reaction will go in a forwards direction. The bottom reaction will go in the backwards direction. Silver ions will react to form silver solid. That's a reduction reaction because it's gaining electrons. Copper solid will break down to copper ions plus two electrons. This is oxidation because it's producing electrons. Reduction always occurs at the cathode. Remember, an oil rig cat. And oxidation is at the anode. So that's our cathode reaction. Silver ions plus one electron makes silver. Our anode is copper solid, forms copper two plus ions plus two electrons. Now we need to make sure when we're writing the overall reaction that the two electrons are even for the two equations. So we need to multiply this equation by two so that we get two electrons. They now cancel out. So we can write our overall redox reaction by just adding these two equations together. So we've got the silver there, two silver plus copper solid forms copper two plus plus two silver solid. Okay, have a go at these questions now in your booklet and there's some chapter questions there for you to have a go at too.